Hi everybody, I'm Jess, this is LARP 101, and today we're going to be talking about the basics of LARP archery. Okay, so this video is from a special request. I did a Q&A a while ago and one of the questions that I got was for some tips on how to do LARP archery. Now, as this is my personal forte at LARP, I was more than happy to oblige, but decided that it would be much better to do a full video rather than just a quick spot on a QA. and I'd like to state for the record that I did not invent the safety techniques that are used in this video. These come from the bow competency that you are required to take um, as part of doing archery at the Lorien Trust, which is an AFES system here in the UK. I absolutely cannot take credit for them. I did not invent them in any way, shape or form. Not every system is going to have rules as strict as these, and many people are probably going to watch this and think that this is very, very intense. However, as the Law Interest has a really good record of avoiding arrow injuries, I feel that this is personally one of the best LARP safety um, instructions that I've actually ever received. I also would really like to thank all of the archers from the Laurian Trust who helped contribute to this video. Bows and crossbows must adhere to your system's weapon check guidelines, so please consult them in order to identify acceptable bow and crossbow types. Now to show you the correct way of checking a bow, I'm going to turn you over to Adam. Hi, my name's Adam. I'm going to show you how to fully check a bow, and then after that I'm going to show you how to string your bow properly. First of all, we're going to check some wooden bows. Both exactly the same, so that one's a recurve and one's an American flat bow. So the checks are exactly the same. You want to check the splinters by rubbing your hand up and down nice and gently. Do you want to get them stuck in your hand? You want to make sure there's no cracks. Give them a nice little bit of flex so here there's any cracking or creaking. And as there's a wooden bow with no wrapping around you, you can actually check and actually see if there's any damage to it. This one's fine. You want to do exactly the same checks for this recurve as well. Because there's no wrapping on it completely, you can actually fully inspect it to make sure there's no cracks, splinters, or any damage to any of your limbs. Next, we have a different type of bow. It's a fiberglass with polyurethane outer shell. You can't see if there's any damage on the inside, so just give it a little bit of flex and listen out to see if there's any damage to the inside of the core. Check your knocking points to make sure there's no damage, otherwise, if you do bring it and it's damaged good it's not going to hold itself in the picture right so we're going to check your string checks first of all you've got to check your knocking loops make sure they're physically attached there's no wear and tear work your way down make sure there's no wear and tear no breakage in your string at all no fraying then onto your knocking area make sure again it's all attached there's nothing falling off way down the string and do exactly the same as you at the other end and make sure your, your other side of your knocking is perfect as well. The only difference with this string, it has a knocking point. So just make sure it hasn't moved and it's still attached basically if, if you're using it for shooting. When checking a crossbow you are looking for the exact same things as you are checking a bow. You are looking to make sure that if it's wooden that it's not splintered, that there's no warping or cracking of the limbs, that everything is nice and secure and you also make sure that the string is not frayed or damaged. If you're in the UK please note that under the UK Crossbow Act of 1987 under 18s are not allowed to use crossbows and that includes at LARP as well. Your LARP should make you aware of any laws that will affect your LARPing but it does help if you're aware of them yourself. I'm Frankie and I'll be taking you through how to properly check fiberglass arrows. So as you can see we've got two slightly different types, um, one's a round head, one's a flat head. Also there's two different types of fletching but most of the arrow is fairly similar. So we'll start with this round head one. So please check from the head all the way to the knock. So, Firstly, you need to make sure there's no debris, no splinters, bits of sticks or dry grass or anything like that in the head. Um, make sure there's not no water in it. So give it like a nice brush round, give it a nice squeeze. Make sure that's all fine. Check that it is properly attached. It's not coming away at this bit. Uh, so that bit's fine. Moving on to the next bit, make sure it's properly attached onto this middle bit because there's three sections on the head. So that is properly attached. Make sure it's properly attached to the shaft there. Nothing's coming away, it's not loose. Yeah, so that's fine. Right, secondly, 
onto the shaft. Now this, this bit's very important, you never want to flex a fiberglass glass arrow and you also don't want to test it near your face because if it shatters it is going to hurt. So very gently twist it away from your body. You should hear what sounds like sandpaper if it's breaking. If it is, do not snap it, just safely dispose of it. So I can't hit anything with this, so that is fine. Moving on to the fletchings. This has three separate fletchings, so I need to check that they're all in line. They're not coming away at all, so that looks fine with them. And then lastly, the knock. It's not coming off, it's not twisting. You've got both sides to it, that's fine. There's nothing in the middle of it that will prevent it attaching to the string. So that arrow's fine. On to the slightly different arrow. We've got the flat head, so checking the head is exactly the same, make sure there's no debris, it's not full of water, it's fully attached in all places, it's fully attached to the shaft. Again, you can't hear any sandpapery type sounds, that's all fine. This is a slightly different fletching, this is an all-in-one fletching, so the main thing you need to check is there's no rips or tears. Um, it's not spinning around when you try and move it, it's not sliding up and down the shaft. That is all fine and then again with the knock it's not coming away or twisting. Unlike with fiberglass arrows when checking wooden arrows what you can do is you can give them a slight flex and what you're looking for is any form of splintering or in listening for any sound that it might be splintering as well. So make sure that when you are checking the arrow make sure it's down by your side so that you're not going to get any splinters in your eye. Broken wooden arrows should be snapped to prevent them from being used accidentally. Do not snap fiberglass arrows the splinters are very dangerous make sure you dispose of them safely. So when you're checking fiberglass arrows, make sure not to run your fingers down them because if you do get a splinter in your skin, it is very, very painful to remove. If you do get one, go to your first aid unit. Do not attempt to remove it yourself because you may cause more damage if you do. Hi, uh, now I'm gonna show you um, the correct way of holding an arrow, both single arrow and multiple arrows. As you can see with multiple arrows, I can count five here. Um, best way to hold it is both at each end. Um, and point the notch relatively downwards. Another way of doing it is to cradle them and keep hold of the knock end just to keep them a little bit more under control. Um, this way they're not going to splay out everywhere and be a danger. Um, to correctly hold a single arrow, you want to hold it, knock down, um, keep it knocked down because if you trip then it's not going to hurt quite as much. Um, now, the incorrect way of holding arrows um, is either sort of at each end, because as you can see they're all splayed out, um, this can cause quite a danger. Um, same as if you hold them at the other end, they're going to splay out, be a little bit uncontrollable. Um, and with a single arrow, um, holding it knocked up, because if you trip, that's going to go straight into you and will be quite painful. So always remember, knocks down and keep big bunch of barrows under control. First of all, attach one end to your knocking point. Make sure it's nice and tight. I usually use the bottom. Put the bow around. You want to step through between your string and your bow. Back of the knee, front of the shin. Bend your knee backwards. And bring it around. Make sure it's nice and tight in there, always check your knocking points afterwards, make sure it's nice and tight because you do want it to come out under tension, give a nice flex, but never dry fire your bow because you can actually damage your limbs by doing it. To de-string your bow, it's exactly the same but in reverse. Step through, shin, knee, bend it forward and it attaches. So now I'm going to demonstrate the correct way to string a bow with bow stringer. Bow string is quite simple. You've got one end has a pocket, goes on uh, one end of the bow, the other end's a loop. You'll notice when you look at your bow string that the top loop is actually bigger than the uh, bottom one. This allows you to slide up and down the bow, whilst the other end is already knocked on. Really simple. Loop on the end, it's not yet secured. Pocket over the other end, make sure that the bow's already in place. Push the string up as far as you can, same with the loop, 
place to put on. Pull up, put the string in place. Comes off, check it's in the knot, the pointer. Uh, moving. So I believe no arrow should really be loosened while you are moving around. That is because if you don't watch your footing and you trip over, uh, you risk uh, impaling yourself on uh, the back end of your arrow. If you need to move, arrow should be taken off the bowstring, you move to a better position and then you re knock the arrow. Bow and arrow should be carried vertically while you're moving to prevent snagging on passersby. Make sure you've got good footing before you actually fire an arrow um, because again, tripping, slipping, falling over, impaling yourself, bad. You should vary your draw length uh, to account for distance. You shouldn't be pulling your bow to a full draw length with someone at close distance, otherwise you risk one hurting them or two, the arrow bouncing back off them onto you, at which point you're going to get stabbed with the knock, which again, could cause you injury as well. Remember that crossbows can't vary their shots and therefore you're gonna have to keep that in mind when you're firing at people. It's always best to check with your system if they have a minimum shooting distance. Arcing shots are not permitted to any systems that I go to. However, I do know that they are permitted to others. The general reason they're not allowed at the systems I go to is because there's a lack of control as to where an arrow is going to go due to ground ricochet. Arrows bouncing back off the ground can result in getting somebody in the eye. Some angling is generally allowed in my system, however too much and you're risking not really being able to shoot accurately and you may risk hitting somebody either in the face or uh, more unfortunately in the groin. What counts as a viable target depends on your LARP system. Torso is generally the best place to aim, however you should be keeping in mind uh, what happens if you aim just a little bit too low. Valid targets for LARP arrows, we say, are from here to here. Nice, big, clear chest area that's open. If you hit arms and legs, fair enough, but please don't aim for the heads. Keep an eye on your LARP system's rules because they may allow headshots, however if you have a choice between a headshot and any other option I would prefer you take the other option. And frankly if your only option is the headshot I would still recommend avoiding it. No one should be using weapons to whack your arrows out of the air. This will risk damaging the arrow which can result in fiberglass going everywhere if you use a fiberglass arrow or it can result in the arrow going wildly off course and possibly getting somebody in the eye. Of course it can even break the arrow entirely which can result in having multiple pointy things flying through the air at once. Under no circumstance should a strung bow or crossbow be ever used to parry a weapon blow and that's even if the manufacturer of the bow says it's okay. Because of the tension on the bowstring, if the string snaps, it can cause injury. People tend to charge archers, so it's really important to get out of the way if you do. Remove your arrow from the bowstring, the foam arrowhead should be pointing upwards, and then you should turn and move away from your attacker. If you need to fight back, then put the weapon, put your bow and arrow down and then pull a weapon, but under no circumstances should you pull a weapon out while holding the bow behind your back. Because of the tension on the bowstring, it needs to be kept inside at all times, because if someone attacks you from behind and hits that bowstring and it happens to snap, you're probably going to have an injury to yourself as well as to your attacker. So it's generally best just to avoid bad practice altogether. So nobody becomes Robin Hood overnight. So make sure you have time to practice in between events. LARP arrows are nowhere near as aerodynamic as regular arrows and therefore they're not going to behave the same way. But they do still fly pretty well and don't think necessarily that arrow design is going to have too much difference. Some people say it does. I personally don't see much of a difference, but it's all on your own preference really. Practice on stationary targets first. If you don't have a will and victim to hand, then feel free to use a target in your back garden. Just try and get one that's about the height of the upper torso. That's going to be the area you're going to need to be aiming at in game, so it's best to get that practice in early. If you do have a willing victim, however, provide them with a shield. Accidental shots to the lower torso do happen far more often than uh, anyone would ever like to admit. So it's the very, at the very least, it's courteous to lend them some protection. And if they are really willing, uh, get them to move about for you. Um, very few targets that you're going to be shooting at a LARP are going to be stationary. Most of them will be moving and a lot of them will be moving quickly. The odds of you fighting someone who is 100% stationary at a LARP is almost zero. So start slow and then slowly have them build up speed. Odds are you're going to be fighting people who are going to be moving very quickly and it's best to get that practice in as well. Have them charge you a few times as well so you can practice getting your bow and arrow out of the way safely. It may be cliche to say that practice makes perfect, but they do have a point. 
Okay, and that is the end of my basics on LARP archery. Thank you so much to everybody from the Laurie Trust who has contributed to this video. You are all absolutely wonderful. My next video is going to be on how to commission custom LARP kit. So if you haven't already subscribed, I recommend you do so. And it would also be brilliant if you could like and share this video. Thank you again to everyone who's helped out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are staying safe and healthy and I'll see you on the battlefield soon.